All right, so this is the first series or the first video um, I'm making on film analysis. It's not all encompassing. Uh, this is specifically what my students have to learn and prove that they know for our tests that we have in class. But I do think it has a lot of really good universal facts for anybody that is a radiologic technologist or trying to just be able to read films more effectively. So the first one that we're going to do is an AP axial C-spine. I apologize in advance, this is probably going to be a decently jumpy uh, video because as most of my students know, I'm not really good at this. I'm just doing this because COVID and uh, this is one of the harder classes to learn. So anytime that you guys can get extra of learning this, I think the better off you are. So for the AP axial C-spine, there's three things that we're going to evaluate for rotation, chin elevation, and your CR angle. Remember for an AP axial C-spine, your CR angle should be 15 to 20 degrees cephalic, okay? And when it's not correct, we'll learn in a little bit here exactly how that can affect your image. So first we're gonna do rotation. One thing that I think is really kind of a good thing to do to help you out with is Imagine your body. This is going to be universal throughout the entire spine or this rule will be. So being able to think about this effectively will help you not only with your C-spine analysis, but with your T-spine and L-spine and even moving down to your sacrum coccyx as well. But if you are standing in AP and you're imagining a image receptor or a bucky behind you, you can imagine on your MSP exactly where your spinous processes would live, right? So I want you to imagine that you're uh, standing AP, and again, that that image receptor is behind you, and I want you to rotate your body to the left side so that you would be kind of in an LPO position, okay? So obviously we don't want to be in LPO, but we're trying to figure out if somebody from an AP axial was rotated to their left side, what visually would change? And again, keeping in mind where that spinous process is, if you turn to the left, you can feel and imagine that spinous process is going to come off to the right. So again, from AP, when I turn left, my spinous process is gonna move off to the right. So what that means is when you're in the AP position, whichever side your patient is rotated towards is going to be the side that um, your spinous process moves away from. And that's important because if after you take your image, you can see the spinous process isn't in the center of your vertebrae, you can tell by which side it's rotated to, which way you need to adjust your patient to get them in true AP. So let's just draw, and apologies in advance if you just showed up on this channel, I am not an artist, but we're gonna do what we can. So this middle one, middle picture, we're gonna call ideal. So this is when everything is set up appropriately. And this square is my image as it comes up on the computer screen, okay? So big thing to remember with your C-spine, all of your images are hung as though they're facing you. So this is gonna be the right side of the patient, or I'm sorry, the left side of the patient's body, left side, left side of the patient's body. And this is gonna be the right side of the patient's body, okay? If this image is done appropriately, your spinous processes are going to be in the center of the vertebrae within the intervertebral disc spaces, okay? When they're rotated, again, it moves off one way or the other. So if I was situated, we're gonna say that this one is RPO. So in this position, your patient, for some reason or another, has the right side of their body closer to the image receptor than their left. Their left is slightly away from the IR. When that happens, again, your spinous process moves away from the side that's down. So when you looked at your image that was hanging, again, we have the left over here, the right over here, that would make an RPO, the spinous processes move to the left side of that vertebrae, okay? Notice that those spinous processes are still within the disc space because if your CR angle is correct, rotation itself isn't gonna change where those 
spinous processes live as far as height goes, okay? And then the last one we'll do for LPO. And again, LPO means that the left side, left back side, posterior side of the patient's body is going to be against the image receptor or the Bucky mechanism if they're standing upright. And again, left side of the body, because now this is hung as though it's facing you, right side of the patient's body, when they're in LPO, the spinous process is going to move away from the side that's against the image receptor. So my spinous processes are going to move off to the right side of the patient's spinal column. Okay? So rotation in the end, and that's one thing that can kind of help you. I always tell students, try to think of the guidelines for your C-spine of what should be in an optimal image and what causes that to change. So in an optimal image, you want the spinous, and I'm just going to do SP, spinous processes in the middle of the vertebrae and in rotation, the outcome is the spinous processes, again SP, move away from the side down. Okay? So this is the first piece that I'm going to show you is, again, the rotation. I'm going to pause the video now and set up to go over the next piece, but I would rewatch this if, if that's not making sense for you, okay? So now we're going to continue on to the second part of evaluating the AP axial C-spine. And the second part that we're evaluating for is chin elevation. So is your patient appropriately positioned with their chin? Um, in an optimal image, I always tell my students that you want your patient to stand as though they're in grammar school or though they think everybody is inferior to them. Just walk around like, hmm, peasants, because you want to have that chin just slightly elevated. And the level of elevation is eventually going to be, or ideally should be, the acantheon to your external acoustic meatus or your AML aligned perpendicular to the IR. So if you're unfamiliar with what the AML is, I'll just show you quick. Your acantheon is the point right below your nose and right above your lip, okay? So that is your acantheon. The whole of the ear is known as your external acoustic meatus. So you're drawing a line in your imagination from the acantheon to the EAM, or as I like to call it, the EAM, and that line is called your AML or your acantheo meata line. So when you're positioning your patient, that chin elevation should be just such to align that line to be perpendicular to your image receptor, okay? So that is your ideal positioning. And hopefully this kind of becomes common sense when we talk it through, but when you don't have that AML aligned, something is going to superimpose your vertebrae. In an ideal AP axial C-spine, you're going to want to be able to see C3 in its entirety through uh, T1, okay? So C2 and uh, C1, we see those through our Fuchs or our open mouth projection. But in this AP axial standard projection, C3 in its entirety through T1 minimum, okay? So if I don't have my head elevated appropriately, if my chin is insufficiently elevated or um, too tucked is another way to put it. That's going to make my mandible go into my spine, right? You can imagine that from here, how much spine you see versus here is going to be very different because my mandible will be superimposing the vertebrae. More specifically, typically, as long as there's not rotation, it will be that mental point or mental protuberance that is, or the synthesis of the mandible that is superimposing the spine, okay? And then if we tilt our head too far back, it's going to be that occipital bone. So the relationship of the chin and the occipital bone are very much so related. If I elevate my head far back, my chin goes up, 
my occipital goes down. If I bring my chin down, chin goes down, occipital moves up, okay? So let's just look at my terrible Heather drawings to kind of make sense of this. I'm also gonna put pictures after this just to show x-ray on x-ray what that would look like, okay? If I can find some, I guess don't quote me because again, I'm not great at this yet. But I'm gonna use different colors to try to make it make more sense. We have the black is our vertebrae, our vertebral column. The green is gonna stand for our mandible and the red will be our occipital bone, okay? And just a couple of things so that we're aware, um, right and left, remember these are hung as though they're facing you. So this is the left side of the patient, this is the right side of the patient for all of our images, okay? Now, this bottom image is gonna be our optimal image, okay? So in our optimal image, C3 again should be shown in its entirety. Our AML is gonna be aligned perpendicular to the IR. When that's done, you're gonna have the mandible, which that's a not super well-centered mandible, but it will be free of superimposition of C3. And then your occipital bone's gonna come through and they're gonna live approximately on the same plane, that same level, so that they're not superimposing that vertebrae, okay? But then we go up here to this first image, and in this image we say that the chin is too tucked, or again, it could also be listed as insufficiently elevated. And that just means from AML position perpendicular, the chin is situated lower, which means in this image, when it comes up for you at your facility, the mandible is going to be superimposing C3, okay? Typically, then your occipital bone, because again, if the chin goes down, the occipital is higher. The occipital, if it's visualized, will be much higher than the mandible. Now, on the opposite side of things, if your chin is too elevated, what's that going to do? That's going to bring that occipital down, because for the third time now, if our chin goes up, our base of the skull, occipital goes down. So in this image, if you're looking at your film, you're gonna have the occipital come through, C3, and your mandible is gonna be really high, okay? So just to be clear, in these images, you're gonna have anatomy superimposing and obscuring your visibility of that vertebrae. So those would not be ideal images, okay? So just to summarize, Chin elevation, that second thing that we want to evaluate for for C-spine, AP axial C-spine projections. Chin elevation, optimally, should be as such so that your AML, acanthion, to external acoustic meatus or eme, that line is perpendicular to the image receptor. If it's not and your uh, chin is insufficiently elevated, it's going to drop the chin and the mandible will be in that C3 vertebrae. If the chin is excessively elevated all the way back, the occipital is going to be shown within that C3 vertebrae. So I'm gonna to try to find a few pictures and I'll post, put those in now and we'll come back and look at that third piece that we evaluate for when we're doing image analysis for the AP axial C-spine. So the last thing that we have to evaluate for for the AP axial C-spine, at least if you're one of my students and you're taking my test, if you're not, welcome. Um, but if you are, the last thing is your CR angle. So your CR angle for an optimal AP axial C-spine projection should be 15 to 20 degrees cephalic. And when that's happening, that's going to place your spinous process in between your vertebrae centered on the intervertebral disc spaces. I think this is the hardest one to evaluate for just because it can be difficult to see. Again, I'll try to include some images just um, kind of standard at the end of me talking about this so you can see. But again, this is the one that I think is the hardest evaluation wise of this section or this projection. Okay, so again, 15 to 20 degrees phallic angle when that's done, that puts the spinous processes in its adjoining intervertebral disc space. So IBDS is intervertebral disc space. 
okay? So what else can happen? You can angle your CR2 caudal, that's anything below 15 degrees cephalic, or you could angle it to cephalic, or anything above 20 degrees cephalic. And when your CR angle is to caudal, that's going to place your spinous process within the vertebral body that it's connected to, okay? When it's to cephalic, it's going to project the spinous process in the inferior vertebrae in the upper portion of that vertebral body, okay? So I'm just going to do my drawings to show you kind of what that looks like. Again, black, which I'll move this way. Black is going to be the spinous processes that are ideal, that's using that 15 to 20 degrees phallic angle. Blue is going to be for your two caudal of an angle, and then red is going to be more than 20 degrees or two cephalic of an angle, okay? So first, this is your AP view. So this is looking straight on. This is what you're actually going to see on the projection when it pulls up for you on your digital screen. When it's appropriately positioned, your spinous process is going to show up right here. So these are your vertebrae. This is your inner vertebral disc space. Your uh, spinous process is living centered in between that inner vertebral disc space. Okay. When your CR angle is too caudal, I'm just going to go to the vertebrae below. When your CR angle is too caudal, that spinous process is going to show in the actual vertebral body, still centered. Because again, we learned previously where this uh, spinous process lives is dependent on rotation, not on our CR angle. Okay? And then the last one, the most difficult to see visually in our projections is when your CR angle is too cephalic. So from AP, looking straight on at your film, that's going to place your spinous process at the top of the inferior vertebral body. So in this scenario with this spinous process, that red dot here, that would actually be the spinous process for the vertebrae above. Okay, so I'm just going to draw some lines to show you what this actually needs or looks like. So this is looking at it from this side. So this isn't going to be how your image is going to pop up, but I think seeing it done from a side view makes it make more sense why it's shown that way. Okay. So in this scenario, this is the anterior portion of the vertebrae. This is the posterior portion of the vertebrae. And these little look like, what, beaks of a bird? Those are your spinous processes. I'm going to be drawing lines. Those lines are your CR, okay? And that's going to be indicative of where your CR is projecting. Where your CR hits, or the pieces that it hits, those are going to be seen together because, again, everything moves at the same angle as your CR. So with your ideal 15 to 20 degrees phallic CR, if I was going through here, I'm going through this inner vertebral disc space and I'm hitting the spinous process. That's why the spinous process is seen in that inner vertebral disc space. Okay, that's why they look like they're together because again, it hits this disc space, hits the spinous process, they're then together. Okay, I'm gonna go down a vertebrae. And now this is blue, so this is your two caudal angle, so anything less than 15 degrees cephalic. And I'm just going to draw my CR angle here, okay? So a straight line, it hits the body of the vertebrae, hits the spinous process. That's why it's going to be projected within that vertebral body. So less than 15 degrees. To caudal. And then this last one is to cephalic, so more than 20 degrees cephalic. So we're going to come at a more severe angle, and it hits the top of the inferior vertebral body and the spinous process. So this is above or to cephalic 
over 20 degrees. So again, wherever this line is touching is going to be what's showing on the same plane. So our ideal, ideal image, see our angle goes through the intervertebral disc space, hits that uh, spinous process, they're going to live on the same plane. Two caudal, hits the vertebral body, then hits the spinous process. Again, it's shown within that vertebral body. And that's what you see when it's too caudal. And then lastly, when you're too cephalic, very severe angle, hits the upper portion of that inferior vertebral body, and then the spinous process, which is again why the spinous process is seen within that upper portion of the inferior vertebral body, okay? So, see our angle? It affects where that spinous process is going to be visualized. Ideally, it should be in the intervertebral disc space. Too caudal of an angle is going to show that spinous process within the vertebral body. Too cephalic is going to show that spinous process in the inferior vertebrae's upper portion. And that is the last thing that we will evaluate for your AP axial C spine. Hope that helps.